gutter oil extracted from filthy sewage, juice made from rotten apples, snacks packed without wearing gloves, dried squid covered with flies, chicken feet directly stepped on with boots, soaking unripe bananas in ripening agents, kneading dough barefooted, and making chili sauce out in the open. A worker who is spraying a ripening agent on the sugar canes says he doesn't care if people are poisoned or not. His goal is simply to sell them. The lady making gutter oil says she is following legal procedures. After seeing these, would you dare consume any of these foods? Food safety in China has always been under fire. Gutter oil, tainted rice, poisonous milk powder, food with excessive additives. And a plague of tainted food products have become a Chinese characteristic, creating a poisonous food chain, eventually finding its way onto the tables of the citizens. However, as China's top officials and privileged individuals have their source of food through a special food supply system, they feel no need to take responsibility to monitor this situation, allowing this pattern of mutual harm to flourish in China. Recently, CCTV reported that the Japanese had sea bass exceeding the acceptable radioactive limit, which was a news story intending to divert attention and criticize the Japanese government for irresponsibly discharging nuclear wastewater. But instead, it ignited public concern over food safety in China. According to the report, on February 7th. The activity level of the radioactive substance cesium-137 in the sea bass caught in Japan's Fukushima Prefecture was detected to be at 85.5 becquerels per kilogram, exceeding the prefecture's fishing association standard of 50 becquerels per kilogram. When the CCTV news report came out, Chinese internet users accused Japan of discharging nuclear wastewater and disregarding the safety of the people. However, netizens also checked China's national standard regulation GB 14882-94 for radioactive substances in food, which states that the activity limit for cesium is 800 becquerels per kilogram, which is 16 times higher than the Japanese standard. It suddenly dawned on the Chinese that all the seafood they have been eating may contain excessive radioactive material. Data shows that by the end of 2022, there were 55 nuclear power units in operation on the Chinese mainland, all of which are located on the southeast coast of China. There is no way of knowing whether this will have an impact on local seafood, but it is a fact that the safety standards for food in China are very low. Low national standards are only one factor contributing to the problem of food safety in China. The most significant issue is the combination of authorities' negligence and unscrupulous businessmen, along with the general public's lack of morality and care factor. Pork is one of the most consumed meats in China. Unfortunately, water-injected pork has become the norm. A few years ago, an undercover reporter visited a slaughterhouse in the Jiangsu province, where the process of injecting water into pigs was captured on video. The clip shows staff using a high-pressure water injection tube to pump water directly into the pig's stomachs through the mouth. It only took about a minute, and a pig weighing 75 kilograms was injected with about 1.5 kilograms of water. Based on the wholesale price of pork at the time, the slaughterhouse would have made an extra 5,000 RMB a day by simply injecting water into the pigs. What's even more concerning is that the official responsible for the quarantine and inspection process was found sleeping inside the slaughterhouse, allowing workers to stamp the seals of approval themselves and for the owner to issue certificates, potentially compromising the safety and quality of the pork. This questionable slaughterhouse has been using regular tap water to process their pork, which can diminish its nutritional value. Unfortunately, there are even more unethical slaughterhouses who go even further by adding hazardous substances like gelatin and Sudan Red G to the water used in their operations. It is said that the addition of Sudan Red G allows the injected meat to retain its normal color, 
while the addition of gelatin to the water allows the solution to enter the pig's body and solidify in the meat. According to food safety experts, consumption of such pork can lead to severe allergies, heart palpitations, and muscle twitching. Not only pigs, but sheep and cattle are also heavily injected with water before they are slaughtered. Many years ago, another undercover reporter had secretly visited a buffalo slaughterhouse located in a small village in the Banan district of Sichuan province. The slaughterhouse was heavily guarded with staff patrolling the area. The reporter witnessed six to seven men filling three buffaloes with water from a hose in a filthy slaughterhouse, even killing one of the animals during the process. After being arrested and questioned, the slaughterhouse owner admitted that each of the seven buffaloes was filled with around 75 kilograms of water. In a society where moral values are rapidly declining, it's not just unscrupulous businessmen who make money by breaking the law. Even ordinary citizens end up harming each other through a pattern of mutual exploitation. Lanxi County, located in Heilongjiang, is renowned for its delicious cantaloupes, thanks to the favorable climate in the area. However, in order to maintain this sweetness, local farmers have been known to spray a type of synthetic sweetener, sodium cyclamate, on the melon plants from the moment they start to bear fruit, right up until the fruit is fully ripe. Many farmers refuse to eat the melons themselves, citing stomach discomfort as a common side effect. Sodium cyclamate is actually banned by the US FDA due to its potential to cause liver damage and impact the nervous system when consumed in excessive amounts. Unfortunately, Chinese agricultural authorities have allowed this synthetic sweetener to be used in large quantities without any regulations. Chinese netizens have expressed that it's not only just Heilongjiang that uses sweeteners on melons, but it's all over the country. Almost no crops are grown without the use of excessive chemicals and pesticides, and this has been the situation for many years. There are also peanuts grown with highly toxic pesticides, seedless grapes grown with contraceptives, lobsters and fish farmed with growth hormones, and the list goes on. In 2017, Chinese search engine Sohu published an article titled Chinese People Soaked in Pesticides, exposing that the total amount of pesticides used in agriculture worldwide is about 3.5 million tons per year, with China accounting for about half of that. Since the 1990s, the amount of pesticides used in China has increased from about 765,000 tons in 1991 to 1.8 million tons in 2014. Over the past 20 years, the use of pesticides in China has increased by about 136.1%. According to credible organizations, over 100,000 individuals in China are poisoned by pesticides and chemical additive residues in food each year, and nearly 40% of cancers are caused by the food patients have consumed. Although vegetables sprayed with pesticides may appear fresh and tender, they often contain a high concentration of pesticide residues, various hormones, herbicides, insecticides, rodenticides, fungicides, ripening agents, and preservatives that are not visible to the naked eye. As a result, the vegetables may lose their natural taste and their consumption can lead to serious health issues. Farmers themselves know that these additives are harmful to their health, so they do not eat their own produce and purchase from other sources. However, when everyone does the same thing, it becomes challenging to avoid the risks, resulting in a vicious cycle of mutual harm that spreads through society like a virus. As we all know, China's environment is very polluted, and industrial wastewater is discharged directly from many remote areas without treatment so you can imagine the impact on agriculture. In 2021, a tweet stated that a farming village in the northeast uses water for irrigation that has been contaminated by wastewater from a nearby chemical plant, and the rice grown in that area could not be sold. However, higher authorities negotiated and coordinated the sale of the rice to the Ministry of Railways for supply to passengers traveling on trains. 
The reasoning is that the train passengers are on the move, so it would not kill them to eat contaminated rice once in a while. Assisted by government officials, significant amounts of toxic food make their way into the food chain. This raises the question of whether officials are concerned about the potential health risks posed by consuming such poisonous and harmful foods. Naturally, they are, which is why, since the inception of the Communist Party, the special food supply system has been one of the numerous extravagant privileges enjoyed by officials at all levels. The so-called special food supply system is a special supply system tailored for officials at all levels of the Communist Party. They have a specialized production base, including large-scale farms and breeding farms. The base also has specialized facilities, including slaughterhouses, meat processing plants, pastry and candy processing plants, cooked food production warehouses, and testing laboratories. These facilities are extremely advanced. And were even specifically designed and built by Soviet experts at the time. The base was designed to produce and process quality vegetables, fruits, meats, oils, eggs, dairy products, etc., especially for the central government. The special food supply system, originally created to secure the food supply of communist leaders during periods of food shortage, has persisted as a means of ensuring their food safety. This exclusive supply system is not only reserved for officials, but is also used for special events like the Olympics and major conferences to guarantee the quality of food. In October 2006, a ceremony was held to honor the special food supply center and its impressive network of supply bases, located in 13 provinces, cities, municipalities, and autonomous regions throughout China. Zhu Yonglan, the director of the center, praised the efforts of the bases, which continue to provide high-quality and dependable organic food to senior cadres across 94 ministries and commissions. The products have been tested for animal safety and approved by the National Medical Products Administration, confirming that the raw materials and auxiliary materials are safe, reliable, non-polluted, and do not contain any hormones or chemicals. China Newsweek had once reported that Beijing alone has numerous organic farms that are production bases for the special food supply system, such as the Zhu Shan Farm at the foot of Beijing's Xishan Mountain, which is the main supplier of fruits and vegetables to senior Communist Party officials. The Beijing Ershan Group is one of the main departments currently in charge of special food supply to the Communist Party. It has a special supply room where the temperature and environmental conditions are carefully controlled at any cost. The new Century Chicken Farm in Beijing was selected to supply eggs to the Chinese Communist Party's Congress of the two sessions. According to the farm staff, they are very careful about the quality of the water and the feed, as well as the health of the chickens. Government officials regularly visit the farm for inspections. The department responsible for the special food supply system of agricultural products is committed to ensuring safety, quality, timeliness, and confidentiality. Originally, the supply system was only available on a small scale to the central government, but has now extended to different departments, provinces, and cities, even extending further to some counties and villages. All these phenomena show that Chinese officials are aware of food safety issues and know how to solve them, but they are reluctant to act. Despite having access to the special food supply system, they are not immune to the effects of pollution and toxic food, as they also have families and dine at restaurants. In a society where mutual harm is pervasive, no one can avoid getting hurt. The only way to break this cycle is by eliminating privileges and promoting higher moral values, encouraging individuals to reflect on their actions.